A lot of Magic the Gathering players know about Tongarth Talrum Hero, but how many know about the Talrum Minotaurs who were actually magically excised out of existence? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about Talrum and the Talrum Minotaurs. Now, I'm gonna do this lore video in a little slight different uh, way than you're used to, at least when it comes to this channel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off the screen and I'm gonna let all the images flow around you while you just hear my beautiful, lovely voice in the background telling you all of the delicious details. So we are talking today about the Talrum Minotaurs, who are from the Talrum Mountains. Now, where are the Talrum Mountains located? They are located in Jamura. What is Jamura? In case you didn't know, Jamura is a major supercontinent on Dominaria. This is the set where, uh, this was the setting, I should say, for sets like Mirage, Visions, Prophecy. So here we have the map of Jamura in its whole, and we shall zoom in, we shall zone in specifically on the Talrum Mountains, which no longer exist. These Talrum Mountains actually were phased out of existence along with the rest of Northwestern Jamura when Teferi tried to save them from the horrors of the Phyrexian invasion. So he actually phase shifted the entire race of Talrum Minotaurs and their home mountains into a pseudo reality from which they shall actually never return. So when you take a look at the Tall Room, there are a number of cards that represent them. There aren't a ton, but there is enough to give you an idea of what they were like and also to contrast against Tongarth. We're going to be doing a lore video specifically about Tongarth soon, and that's what led me down this path. I wanted to talk about the people of his homeland. So let's start out with the Tall Room Minotaur. This was first printed in Mirage. And it's two red, two colors for a 3-3. Three, three. It's got haste, and it says, Don't insult a Talrum unless your mount is swift. And you can see a Talrum Minotaur. It looks like he is literally skidding down the side of the Talrum Mountains in such haste. You can see his beaded hair flowing out behind him. They have uh, the, the beads and things like that. Are There's different clans with different amounts of beads. For example, Tongarth was born into the clan of three beads. So you can see all the beaded hair of this minotaur. You can see him swiftly just ripping down the mountain at what is clearly a high pace. I enjoy the fact that there are sayings. Other parts of the world have sayings specifically like, don't insult one of these minotaurs unless your mount is swift. That says multiple things about the minotaurs. That they take, insult, that they take insults seriously, that they are very, very quick and you will not escape them unless you have something like a horse something of that nature if you want to get away from the minotaurs now these minotaurs aren't mindless brutes in fact the Talrum clan have their own religions and some of them are dedicated to goddesses of learning some of them gods of judgment so they have their gods and goddesses in different categories so you have the goddess of learning who is Kindea, you have the god of judgment Toron, and you'll actually see quotes of uh, Toron specifically when you look at some of the flavor text on some of the cards associated with the Talrum. Anyways, this is your basic Talrum Minotaur. You can see they have a they have a standardized overall brown appearance. That is the way that they look. We have a few different cards from the Talrum clan specifically. You have the Talrum Minotaur. You have the Talrum Piper. And this is one red, four colors for a 3-3. Three, three. All creatures with flying able to block Talrum Piper do so. And the flavor text says, When the Talrum began to play, the dragons fell from the sky to squash the obnoxious noise. So this is music that to the Minotaurs may be soothing and enjoyable, but to all other creatures, it's just a cacophony. And the artwork actually shows a dragon just plummeting down towards this Minotaur, who is showing no concern whatsoever, just playing the pipes, possibly as a distraction for the rest of the clan to be able to maneuver in. And again, you can see the long beaded hair, and he is he does clearly have brown skin, even though the artwork is very 
orange, and reddish. Now, moving along, we have the Tall Room Champion. Now, this is your next level. This guy is a, a step above your random everyday Minotaurs. So, one red, four colorless, three, three, first strike. Whenever Tall Room Champion blocks or is blocked by any creature, that creature loses first strike until end of turn. And the flavor text says, in the Tall Room language, there is no word for surprised. Honestly, I really like the way this ties into the original Tall Room Minotaur that we talked about, where it said, don't, don't insult them unless you have a swift mount speaking to their speed. And this even further speaks to the speed of the Tall Room Minotaurs showing, oh, hey, nobody can actually have first strike against them. That's how fast a Tall Room Champion is. There's literally nobody faster. If you try and outpace them, it doesn't matter. They will outmaneuver you. They have the firstest of strikes. And you can see that the Tall Room Champion is actually wielding two Crystal Blades. Tall Room Crystal Blades. And you can see that he is a very beaded individual. Not only is his hair full of beads, but he has beads coming down in a V over his forehead. He has beads wound along his gigantic impressive horns and bead bracers and even some sort of beaded belt. And behind him, you can see what looks like a very cool glyph glyphed window i'm not sure exactly what's going on behind it because you can see all kind of flames or whatever but there is a there are multiple ruined rings behind him it's very compelling artwork and this tolerum does indeed look very intense so you have your taller minotaurs you have your pipers you have your champions and then you have tongarth the actual tolerum hero now, one of the first things you're going to notice, because the Tallroom Champion, right, he, he had brown fur as well, you're going to notice that Tongarth actually has a lot of these big patches of white fur. It's either white fur or where his fur is absolutely missing. You can see the patchiness of his brown fur. Now, we will, we will go into what has happened to Tongarth and why he looks like this in a future video when we talk about Tongarth's history, but it's important to note that the Tallroom were very, very vain. They were very vain minotaurs, and they placed a lot of value on beauty. First of all, they considered anything not a minotaur to be ugly automatically, very similar to the elves of Lorwyn with the eye blight concept. They revisited that in Lorwyn. However, the, uh, the minotaurs specifically value personal beauty, and the sad truth is Tongar started out as a very beautiful Minotaur that they had high expectations for, but due to a tragedy, he unfortunately lost that beauty, and it became one of his biggest shames, in all honesty. It really weighed down on him. Now, we can see Tongar Tallroom Hero is two red and three colorless for a 4-4, four, four, so he's bigger than any of the other Tallroom Minotaur that we've seen at all. He has Vigilance in the old school wording. It says, attacking doesn't cause Tongar Tallroom Hero to tap. And his ability is pay one red and one colorless and tap him. Tongarth deals damage equal to its power to target creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to Tongarth. So he is very much about fighting. This is what a hero is all about. So Tongarth is Talrum's greatest hero, and actually the only Minotaur who did not get phased out when the Talrum Mountains were pulled out of existence by Teferi. Now we get another little glimpse of what it's like as part of Tallroom Society, when we look at the cards that specifically have flavor texts tied to them. So we have Blood Frenzy, which is one red, one colorless. Target attacking or blocking creature gets plus four, plus zero until end of turn. At the end of the turn, destroy that creature. And then it says the flavor text, when Tauron bellows, none survive. And remember, Tauron is the Minotaur, the Tallroom Minotaur God of Judgment. When Tauron bellows, none survive. Not even the warrior whose horns he rides. And that's a Talrum adage or a Talrum saying. That's pretty intense in all honesty to think about it. You've been chosen by the God of judgment and you're not going to survive. You will lay waste to everyone in your path, but at the same time, you will also be undone. That is some deep flavor. Now, obviously the, the artwork itself does not depict any sort of minotaur. This just depicts some sort of barbarian warrior fighting some kind of horror. But uh, the flavor text is what we're focusing on here. The Boiling Blood is the next card we're going to use to illustrate what the Tall Room Minotaurs are about. One red, two colors. It's an instant. Target creature attacks this turn if able. Draw a card. So the Boiling Blood is boiling blood because you're being taunted in this case. And we see that with the Tall Room taunts that are listed in the uh, flavor text. 
Your father has no horns. Your mother wears a bell. You drink the milk of goats. Tall room taunts. I love it. The, the first insult speaks to the fact that your father has no horns, which means he's disfigured and ugly, completely unacceptable for tall room society. Your mother well wears a bell. They're calling your mother a cow. A minotaur's mother being called a cow, just an everyday milking cow. That's crazy. And then you drink the milk of goats. That's just like saying, oh, you're not tough enough to drink beer or ale or whatever. You're just a milk drinker. You're just a child in an adult's body. That sort of insult. That's that's fantastic. Well, well done with that. I like the way that this illustrates the flavor. Now, we have a card here next up, Flaming Sword. One red, one colorless. The artwork depicts Tongarth holding a flaming blade. And it's funny how tiny the flaming blade looks in comparison to him. You can see this is after whatever tragedy befell him has befallen him. And it says, you may play Flaming Sword at any time you can play an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has first strike. And the flavor text says, it's not Tolerum Crystal, but I must admit, it gets the job done. And this is a quote specifically from Tongarth. So, this, this illustrates, as I already did illustrate with the Tolerum Champion, that Tolerums favor their crystals specifically from the Tolerum Mountains, but at the same time, if a weapon is efficient in battle, that's what they will accept. So overall, not a shabby way to illustrate that. And the final card we have that references Tolerum is actually kind of, it, it's ending on a sad note, really. One red, one colorless for a Minotaur Explorer. When Minotaur Explorer comes into play, sacrifice it unless you discard a card at random from your hand. And the flavor text, again, is what we're focused on here. After the invasion devastated the Talrum and Herloon tribes, the survivors began to search for other Minotaurs. So, this would be one of the, the few, I mean, I know I said Tongarth was the only Talrum Minotaur, but the truth is there are, there are a few other ones, but they don't, they don't matter the same way Talrum does. I'm uh, not Talrum, sorry, Tongarth. They don't matter the same way that Tongarth does, because they're not big epic story characters. So this would have been one of the survivors. Actually, this isn't even this isn't even a um, this isn't even a tall room. Now that you look at it, you realize this would actually be a most likely a Herloon Minotaur from the artwork. This the tall room Minotaurs are brown, so it could actually be that there are no tall room Minotaurs left aside from Tongarth. It's not. I mean, I'm I'm making some assumptions here because we can't get every scrap of information that we need to know for sure. But considering we don't see Talrum mentioned ever again, and there are no Talrum at all, and this, this character right here in this card just looks like a Herloon, I think it's safe to say that the Talrum Minotaur are gone, and Tongarth will be the last of his kind, as sad as that is. But there is a silver lining to what happened to him, and it does tie into the Herloons and all that, and we will cover that when we get to Tongarth's lore video. So, my friends... I hope that you enjoyed this dive into the Talrum Minotaurs of the Talrum Mountains. I thought that it was an excellent bit of backstory to lead us to our inevitable lore video about Tongarth. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Appreciate all the support that you give me. And remember, my friends. Together, we are the sixth color of magic.